All right. I just want to give everybody an overview of my workbench. Okay. Now, there's my workbench. Now, you can see... Let me see if I can raise this up. See, this is just what a big... Basically, it's an entertainment center, okay? Uh, you know, you can put your TV in there. It's just a, like a big cabinet, but it it's all set up perfectly to make a jeweler's bench. Now, if you can find one of these, I found this at a thrift store. I think I paid $100 for it. But these, these are just perfect. There's a lot of storage. It, it just makes a great jeweler's bench. Now, I'm going to go over everything, you know, that you're going to need to get and how you set your bench up. Now, if you don't have this, that's fine. You know, you can use a, a table. You can use whatever you have. But there's just certain things that you're going to want to do when you're getting, you know, your, your jeweler's bench set up. But now, the first thing I want to say is you're going to need some light. Okay, now, if you look... Right there, this is a this light right here is a brass, an old brass lamp that I found. And you can see it's got a good base on it down there on the bottom. Okay, good base there. And then now you see this light. I can take this light and I can position this light anywhere I need it. Okay, and now lighting is very important. You want to be able to have light on your bench exactly where you're working at so you can see what you're doing. You're going to be doing most all your work on the bench pin. So really, the first thing, you know, after you get your lighting figured out, what you're going to need to do, you're going to need to get a real good bench pin. Okay, now you can uh, look on my website. We have a lot of tools, you know, very, uh, very reasonably priced. But get you a good bench pen. Now, you can just get a plain one like this. Or you can get one that has like a little a little anvil, okay, on the top. Okay, so now, if your bench pen is, doesn't come with an anvil, you're going to need a way to, uh, to work your metal. So you're going to need some type of an anvil or a bench block. Now, right here, you can see this is what this is what I use. Okay, now I work my metal right on this this vice. I, I use this vice. Now, um, so basically, instead of a uh, anvil attached to my bench pin, I I have this set up. Okay. Now, a, a good vice like this is really handy if you can find one that has this anvil on it. It's just really nice for uh, working your metal. Now, you're also going to want to get a little a bench block, you know, uh, something that's perfectly flat. Okay, now, see, this is this is just a little bench block, but it's, see, it's perfectly flat. Okay, now, see, this surface is not flat. It's all, it's all nicked up and everything from, you know, where I've been over the years. I've, been, I've worked a lot of metal on this vice right here. See, this is my little, this is my little Harbor Freight vice. Okay, now this is a great little jewelry vice. A lot of people say these vices are, are not that good, but I'm telling you, they really are. And they, they're really great. Okay, we'll talk more about that later. I, I do have a video on the Harbor Freight jewelry tools, okay, and I highly recommend that you watch that video, okay? Now, that video is really going to help you a lot, uh, show you all the Harbor Freight tools and everything. It's it's just a real good video, so watch that video, okay? Subscribe to my YouTube channel, watch that video. So, all right, now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to give you an overview here, and I'm going to show you kind of how you set this up, but now... Like I said, if you can find a bench like this, this is this is really nice, okay? Now, you see right here, you got this, this long drawer. 
See, now that's normally where you would put your keyboard. That pulls out, okay? And then there's a whole other drawer right there. And I got that, you know, I've got a lot of other tools on that drawer. All right? So if you can find one of these, it, this, is, this thing is just awesome. I mean, see, it has two doors on it. Okay, you can see there's a door there, and then over here, there's another door, okay? But it's got a lot of space. It's got a lot of room up here, okay? There's all kinds of room. Look at that. See, you got shelf space. You can put more stuff up on top. And then it's got these drawers down here. Okay, and it's just got a lot of space. So try to find one of these. If not, you can you can use any different type of table or cabinet or just whatever you have. You, you can make it work. But now I want to show you all the basics that you're going to need and basically, you know, the order of what you're going to need to get. Now, like I said, the bench pin is very important. Okay, now you want to make sure... When you mount your bench pin, you want to make sure that right below your bench pin, see, now right here, I have a catch pan, all right? Now, see, see that? Now, this drawer pulls out, see, and I all I do is I open this, and it's a perfect place to put my catch pan you you want to catch all your silver okay because silver is expensive and you don't you don't want to lose your silver but you know most jewelers benches all jeweler benches just usually have something built in for catching your silver okay all right now you got your bench pan all right now the next thing that you're going to want to get, before you can really start adding tools to your bench, okay, what you want to do is you want to get you some racks. All right, now you can see right here I have some racks. Okay, now see right there? Now see I have this rack right here. Got my hammers on it. All right, now I got some more racks right there. You can see right there, I have my pliers on that rack. Then I got another little little rack back here. It's got, you know, various tools on it. So before you get your tools, get you some racks so that you can mount your tools on your racks. Now, the whole idea here of setting up your bench is you want all of your tools to be grouped. Okay, now you see what I got right over here. Okay, I got all my hammers over here. See, I got I got my hammers. I got some more hammers up there. But right there I got my hammers. Okay, and then if you notice right here, I got a magnet. Now that's another Harbor Freight item, but that's real handy. You put that magnet there. And you can stick all your uh, all your files. See, I mostly got my little you know needle files, okay. But your stamps and your files and everything you can put right on that magnet. And then you know, right down here on your main work area. See your main work area of your bench. Okay, you want you want this thing to be clean. Okay, in other words. When you start working on a piece of jewelry, you want you want this part of your bench to be nice and organized, nice clean area to work with. You don't want to you don't want to clutter up this part of your bench with a whole lot of tools and stuff because this is where, you know, you're mostly going to be laying your metal out and planning your piece out. And so you want room to work. Now, a little tray like this if you can find a tray like this, this is a real handy, see, this is just a little, this is a little glass tray, but it's got some little sections on it. 
but you can have a little tray with some sections on it and that's good for laying out you know different things you know you can put your solder on it or whatever you're working on you know you you can lay that out like that okay and then you know you just want everything to be in its place and organize now the, the idea behind all this is I can set right on my chair and you, you can set your bench up to where you can set in one spot and you can just reach up and get whatever tool you need you can get it okay see I, I know right where my tools are and, and you'll get a lot more done if you you group all your tools together okay so that's it's kind of simple you group your tools together and and you know I put my jeweler saw right there I got some punches I got other you know tweezers and other tools that I use dividers and stuff like that over here I got my you know my ring sizers Different tool you know you can do it different ways you don't have to set your bench up exactly the way I got mine set up but I'm I'm really happy with this uh, setup I've, I've done a ton of work with it and I, and I think that you'll you'd be happy with it too if you if you find one of these to, to make you uh, make your bench out of all right, now you're going to want to get, uh, you know, your basic pliers, you know, okay, just, you know, basic jewelry pliers, some snips. Now, I have a lot of different hammers and, like, little, I got little specialty hammers over here. And, uh, you don't need all that starting out. Now, if you want to get the basic uh, little tool kit, okay, to get started, that's that's all, most all your basic hand tools. That's a really good uh, that's a really good way to go. Or you can just buy separate tools. All right, now you're gonna need you're gonna need some hammers, a rawhide mallet. Okay, this right here you're gonna have to have a basic rawhide mallet. Okay, I have a bunch of different types of mallets and everything, and you know I I make them. Uh, here's one I made. This has got two heads on it, uh, one on each end. This is one of my favorite mallets, but I, I made these. But, you know, you can just get your basic rawhide mallet. All right, now you're going to need a steel ring mandrel. Okay, now here is a, is a basic steel ring mandrel. All right, now you're going to need this. For making rings and bezels and uh, doing all kinds of work on this ring mandrel. All right. So get a good hard steel ring mandrel. One one that's made out of good steel. Okay. That'll hold up because you're going to be pounding a lot of metal on this. All right. And then now you can get all these little cheap hammers like these ones are Harbor Freight hammers. They're really good. See, they got a soft end, and then there's a brass end. Okay, these are good. You need you need different little hammers like that. Now, I'm going to tell you uh, uh, one of the most important hammers that you're going to use in jewelry making is this. This is a called a chasing hammer. Okay, now you see you see this now. This was one of those little chasing hammers. You see these little chasing hammers. Now, you buy these at a craft store, okay, or you can get these little hammers. Now, I would not recommend getting one of these little hammers. For one thing, these are expensive. Now, this had a handle. You can see a cheap plastic handle. It broke almost immediately. It didn't give me much service at all. All right, but now I would highly recommend that you don't get one of these type. The little cheap ones, they're, they're you know, they want about $25 for them. Okay, but they're not worth the money. They're real cheap. They're made out of soft metal. So what you do is, instead of buying one of these 
cheap little chasing hammers, you go and you go down to Napa and you buy yourself one of these. All right, now you see this. They sell this hammer at Napa. Okay, now these hammers are for doing body work. But what this hammer is made for, this hammer is made for pounding out metal, for pounding metal flat, okay? See, this head is specifically shaped. It's, it's a little bit domed, very slightly. See, it's not perfectly flat, but it has a slight dome to it. And this is what you use for getting your metal flat. When you, you put your metal down and, and you're going to hit it and you're going to make your metal flat. Very important. A chasing hammer is very important in jewelry making. I highly recommend go to Napa, get you one of these. It's a body hammer. It has a real good heavy duty. I mean, look at this thing. It, this thing will never, you know, it's never going to come loose on you. All right, it's going to last you a lifetime. Solid hickory handle. They're really nice. Now, you want to keep this head. Basically, you want to polish it. See, I got to I got to polish this one. I got I got a bunch of these, okay? See, I got I got about 3 or 4 of these. Cuz they're so good and I just I like the hammer, okay? But now, for a chasing hammer, I would recommend getting that. Okay, now, for a rawhide mallet, you can actually make a rawhide mallet. Now, all this is is a, is a piece of a wooden dowel, and I got, a, I got a, um, a, one of those big dog bones at Walmart for about $3.00. And you take that dog bone and you just, I got a video on it on my YouTube here. If you want to watch my YouTube, all right, you can make you some rawhide mallets real easy. You just take that dog bone, soak it in water, watch the video and learn how to make a good rawhide mallet real cheap for like about three bucks. And these little cheap mallets work great. For light duty work, you can't beat it, okay? You want you want all different weights of mallets. You want light ones. This is a real light mallet. I use it a lot. It's the cheapest thing. You you know, for three bucks you can get a, a rawhide mallet and have fun making it. Roll that dog bone up, drill your hole in it, and and you're good to go. And glue your glue your handle in there with some good wood glue. All right. So now, hammers are important. Now you want to get something like like this, which is an overall. This is a Harbor Freight cheap hammer, but it's a great hammer for making jewelry. Okay, that's a one pound hammer. But see, it's soft. It's good. It's great for making jewelry. It's got some sand in it, but you get these cheap, real cheap at Harbor Freight. So you get your basic hammers, you know, you get your little, little different little brass, brass hammers. Here's another little cheap Harbor Freight hammer. All right, you cannot beat it, but watch that Harbor Freight jewelry video uh, on the jewelry tools. It, it's really good. I go over all the Harbor Freight tools in detail. All right, now, this is your jeweler saw. Typical, you know, typical jeweler saw. This is adjustable. All right. Now, what you want to do is you want to get you some good blades. Okay, they're not that expensive, but get you a good assortment of blades so that, you know, you'll have the right size blade for the right size metal when you go to start cutting your metal and stuff, okay? Okay. But I, I usually keep my jeweler saw right up here, right there on the top. Put it right here. See, if you have everything in its place, 
you'll know right where your tools are, all right? So, you know, have a lot of good tools on my website, so look around. Now, soldering is, is a very important, and annealing. You, you, you're going to have to learn how to anneal metal when you start out. Get this. This is the cheapest way you can go. Now this, this right here, this is a fire brick, okay? This is just a plain fire brick. And, and you can do all your soldering right on this, okay? All right, now. You put your metal here, you can anneal it on that, and you can solder it on that. There's a lot of different expensive things that you can buy, okay? But you don't really need all that. We're going to talk more about that when we get into the soldering, okay? So that's going to be a little bit later on, but you need somewhere to solder. Now, you're going to need... A torch for soldering okay now for soldering this is what I use okay now I use this okay now most people say oh that's that's a welding torch why would you use that for soldering well I'm gonna tell you a little bit about about soldering okay now what what you get when you start out as far as soldering, okay, your torch is going to determine what you're going to be able to do. Now, the reason I like this torch is because I make my own metal. In other words, I make ingots, okay? Here's, here's an ingot. You see this? I made this ingot right here. All right, now I made this in my ingot mold sitting right over there. Now I'm going to take this and I can make me some wire. I can roll this down on my rolling mill and then I can draw this out through my draw plates with my rolling mill and I can make wire. I can make whatever I want. Now I highly recommend that you learn how to make your own materials because to buy wire or sheet or whatever it is that you need for your different projects is very, very expensive. You go to a big company, you know, like Rio Grande or whatever, you're going to pay a lot of money. Now, I highly recommend that you learn how to make your own materials. Now, you're going to have to... Uh, get set up to make your own materials you're going to need a few things okay so that's going to be covered in another course that you know that's the intermediate course is going to cover up making all your own materials and all that how to make wire how to make sheet and how to do all that stuff but whatever tour if you get a, a torch like this now if you have the money from the beginning, and you get a torch like this, okay, you you can do anything you need to do with it. You can, you can melt your silver to make ingots, okay? You can melt your silver to do casting. You know, you have plenty of heat, and and that's what you want. You want plenty of heat. Now, you can get a smaller torch, you can get like a, a butane type torch. They make all sizes. Okay, I don't use that, but a lot of people like those for soldering. But I like plenty of heat, and I can solder anything I need to solder, and I can do it really quick. So I recommend this. Now, I have a video on... This exact thing, setting this all up. You can watch that, on, okay, on YouTube. You can watch it. But I highly recommend getting this set up. Now, this is oxygen and propane, all right? The torch, to me, is one of the most important things that you need, okay? Now, 
Another reason I like this bigger torch is whenever you're going to be working, pretty much anything you're going to make, you have to have your metal annealed. Okay, now, yes, you can buy... You can buy from a company. You can buy metal, okay? But the, here's the thing about, about that. You can buy what they call dead soft metal, okay? Now, dead soft means it, it's been annealed and it's real soft and it's easy to work. But the problem is the minute that you start working that metal... It's going to get work hardened, okay? Now, once it gets work hardened, it's real stiff, and it's not easy to work with. So, you have to keep your metal annealed. When you're, when you're working your metal, you have to work it, and then you have to anneal it, okay? So, keep that in mind. It's, it's much better, if you really want to get into this, you're much better off making your own. See, now here's a piece that, that I, I rolled this out on my rolling mill. See, now, that was just a small little ingot, and I rolled that out, okay? But, you know, if you're going to only buy metal from a company you know buy your sheet and, and you know your wire and whatever it is you're going to be using that's fine but remember that you're going to have first of all you, you buy a sheet and you cut out what you need all right and you're going to use what you need now what are you going to do with that leftover sheet it's going to go right down in your scrap bin And it's going to go right into here, and it's going to be scraps. Now, that's another reason why I recommend learning how to make your own, do your own metal, because you can take all this scrap metal and turn it right back into good usable material, whatever it is. If it's a little piece... If it's a cut off, whatever it is, you can you can turn it right back into usable metal. All right. So I highly recommend I recommend getting a torch like this if you're gonna go deeper into this and you're gonna make your own metal, which I highly recommend because you're gonna save a lot of money. You're gonna find out as soon as you start buying silver, that it's not cheap, okay? But you can make your own for way, way cheaper, okay? All right, we got that covered. So that's, you know, that's your basic bench. But now you're going to need, you're going to need some measuring tools, okay? And measuring tools are very important. You're gonna need you're gonna need a set of calipers, all right, for measuring. And, and you know you can use these. I like these ones. You can use the digital ones. I like them too. Or also, you you know you can use uh, you can get a steel ruler. Now, this is something that you gotta have, and these are dividers, okay. Now these are these are the cheap Harbor Freight dividers, but I really like these. They they really work good. Okay, I'm telling you, for the money, these work really well. So you're gonna need you you know you're gonna need measuring. You're gonna need a way to measure your metal in the market. So you're gonna need some dividers, calipers. And then what you want to do is you want to make you some good uh, some good punches punches and you want a real sharp uh, scribe. See, this is just a screwdriver, and I took this screwdriver 
and I filed this down. I filed a real nice point on this. You can see this right here. See, I got a real sharp point on this, and I use this. I can scratch my lines right on my silver. Then I know where to cut, okay? So that's the basic tools right there that you're going to need. Now you're going to need you're going to need some tweezers and stuff, okay? Now there's various uh there's various tweezers that you can get. Now right here this is what they call a ring clamp. I highly recommend these are ring tweezers. See, you can put your ring on here and your ring shank goes right around here and this holds your rings while you solder them. Uh, if you're going to be doing any rings at all, I highly recommend getting some ring tweezers. These are not much money. You can find these cheap online, okay, but get get you some ring tweezers, okay? And then that's your basic tools that you're going to need. You know, you're going to need your, your mandrel is important for, for uh, working metal, ring mandrel, and then you want to get you a plastic mandrel as well, okay, because this is very cheap. This is like 2 or $3, cheap, cheap, but it's got all your sizes. And then this, this right here, this comes with these. Now... For about four or five bucks, you get both of these or whatever. Really not much money. But you need a way for rings. You need a way to size them. All right. So there, that's your, this is your basic, your basic tools. With these amount of tools, you can make. You'll be surprised at how much jewelry you're going to make with the tools that I've just covered in this video. All right. So, um, there's your basic bench. Now, like I said, if you don't have one of these type benches, that don't worry about it. You know, but there you go. I've basically covered it. You got your tools, your racks, you group your, group your tools. Now, one other thing I want to say is right here is my Harbor Freight flex shaft right up here. All right, now I highly recommend, I highly recommend that you get one of these. This is a Harbor Freight Flex Shaft. See, I got it right here. It hangs right down, but, but this is right, right near my bench pin. Okay, let's see. This is a tool that you definitely want to get. The Harbor Freight Flex Shaft is probably one of the best tools that I've ever gotten from Harbor Freight. I've had this thing a long time, and it always works. It's very powerful, and it's really, really, really worth the money. You can get more expensive ones, Two or three times the money if you want to get a good one, like a Fordham or something like that. But this flex shaft right here from Harbor Freight, you cannot beat it. It just works great. And this will save you hours and hours of time, okay? Now, as soon as you can get it, get this, okay? Th this will literally save you so many hours of filing when all you got to do is just put this little drum on there and run right around a ring shank and in about two minutes you can run around a ring shank and finish that ring and you're going to spend a half hour at least filing so there you go save time with this tool it's amazing you can drill you can do everything you need highly highly recommend it okay now that's that's the basic bench. All right. Now I've covered everything. So now go ahead and get your get your tools. Remember I have a lot of a lot of tools on my website. 
Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up here. So, uh, I do appreciate you stopping by my channel. And remember, if you want to learn jewelry making, silversmithing, you came to the right channel. So, please do subscribe to my channel. And also, we have a fantastic group over on Facebook. We have a Facebook jewelry making group. I highly recommend you, you go by and sign up to our Facebook jewelry making group. There's a lot of people over there making all different types of jewelry. And uh, it's just a, a real fun place right now. Okay, so I highly recommend you check out our uh, Facebook uh, group. And, of course, you know, on our website, we offer uh, online courses for silversmithing, uh, three different levels, uh, beginner, intermediate, and advanced. So, check that out as well. So, uh, today's video was just a, a basic overview for, you know, getting set up on, on the bench. Now, there's going to be a lot more videos coming out, so please... Uh, Please do subscribe because we'd love to have you as a member here. And also, uh, please leave me a comment, okay? Um, I really like it when you guys leave me comments. Um, you know, it, it, it helps everybody. It's good for everybody, um, you know, and maybe I may not have the best answer for you, but somebody else may. So leave us a comment, and if you do... If you do decide to uh, subscribe to my channel, if you would just do me one favor, if you would just go down in the comment section in that little box, and if you would just type in, I subscribed, that would be great. That would be fantastic, and uh, that would help me out a lot as far as growing the channel. Uh, I'm already uh, over a thousand subscribers, which is, is really awesome. I'm, you know, I'm really happy about that. Um, so yeah, so all right. Well, it's been uh, it's been nice. Uh, my name's Steve, and I'll talk to you in the next video.